Hey, how's it going everybody? I'm Ben from Universal Audio, and welcome back to another special edition of UA Live. Uh, today, we this is I'm so excited for you guys to see this show. Uh, we've lined up a really special session uh, with our good friend Shakir King. Uh, he's joined by the band Moon Taxi, and they're all together in a studio down in Nashville. Uh, they're hanging out at Sound Emporium. Uh, and the goal of today's show is we're going to kind of show you guys really what it's like to do a live tracking session using the new API console emulation inside of Luna. So you guys are going to get to see how this works in real time, how it works with a band for both doing like a live tracking thing as well as some overdubs. Uh, and of course, all along the way, we're going to get to pick Shakir's brain and uh, get some recording tips and, uh, and production tips as well. And, uh, because the, the process that they're going through for the song is actually, it's, it's really interesting. I think you guys are going to uh, walk away super inspired from today's broadcast. So uh, without further ado, let's, let's start diving in uh, and let's say hello to Shakir. And I noticed you got a, you got a familiar face uh, sitting next to you today as well. Uh, you mind introducing uh, Spencer as well? Here to invite you into our session and kind of show you this new implementation in Luna with the uh, API vision uh, and, and emulation. Good. It's really excellent. Oh, that's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, well, well, we're no doubt we're going to geek out through here. And uh, for you guys following along at home, you probably Spencer probably looks really familiar uh, from uh, last time we got together to do one of these big streams, right? Yeah, absolutely. Spencer and I are, are, are sort of long time term friends now. Um, we we uh, I did an album with them like three albums ago, so it was maybe six or seven years ago. And Spencer and I have been uh, constant collaborators since that time. And uh, he, you know he's the band's he was the band's producer before and has continued uh, after my involvement in the Daybreaker record. Um, and uh, you know he's phenomenal talent. You know it's like I respect his his ability so much, uh, and he's a great collaborator. So I'm I'm here with a. A, a, a song that he he and the band started a couple years ago. Uh, maybe if you just kind of let us know, uh, give us a little bit of background on the on on the the production and the song where we're at, so we can kind of un, uh, unro un, un, unravel right. this for everyone. Totally. Um, the initial seed of this song. The song's called Mission, uh, and uh, <clears throat> I guess it was uh, like summer 2019. Uh, Three of us, me, Trevor, and Wes, other band members, went and met with um, the uh, songwriter producer Busby, who's unfortunately passed away uh, last year. Um, met with him at his place here in Nashville to just as a get to know each other, have a right, and uh, uh, pretty quickly came up with the chorus for this song, um, which he played a heavy part in writing. Um, it's super awesome talent to work with uh, and that's kind of where we left the song uh, it was a late night and it was just like well, we'll come revisit this uh, next time we meet and we met up with him again in LA uh, and actually wrote another song with him a song called Take the Edge Off which is on our most recent album um, but we always had this mission song laying around um, and knew we wanted to finish it um, so just this past I don't know in the past half year or so uh, finally got around to writing verses and kind of seeing, seeing the thing through as a song. Um, and when Jakir brought up this, this opportunity to try out this new stuff in Luna, uh, it was kind of felt like the perfect song to, to demonstrate some of this stuff. Um, I, I've been doing some work in Luna with Jakir and also some other Moon Taxi stuff, uh, tracking and, and mixing and, and in love with the platform. And uh, to be able to get a chance to do this and to be, you know, I guess one of the first, if not, you know, sessions using the API stuff uh, was super exciting. So um, it felt like a good way to bring uh, all that together. And I know Jakir's had, uh, uh, has, has known, was new Mike Busby for a uh, decade. So it was cool to have him be a part of, of somebody that, uh, you know, he was familiar with as well yeah when you when when you call i guess it's been a couple few months ago we sort of started talking about this actually spencer and i were working on a project at my place um and um you know i just it, i mean we were just we, been, we hang out a lot so i th i thought hey this would be i mean want to do it in nashville 
Moon Taxi would be, you know, awesome, you know, to do it. What do you think? And uh, we talked about it a little bit, and he he mentioned this this right with Busby, and I was like, oh, that's so that would be so cool because I I knew Busby for uh, 20 years, a uh, very good oh, wow. friend of mine, um, and so it's just like. You know, because it's, it's like almost a little bit of, a, in my mind, a little bit of a, it's, a, it's a further connection that we have, a little bit of a tribute to him. He kind of lives on in the composition. Um, mm -hmm. So it was just kind of like a really exciting, a really exciting thing, opportunity for us. Yeah. Well, and that's really cool because, like, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to show people today is, you know, obviously this is the, yesterday we had a show where we got to show kind of the mixing side of using the new API console emulation. And today we get to show the tracking side, because to me, like part of the magic here is the fact that you can seamlessly switch from recording to mixing to overdubbing. Uh, and the whole time, you're not thinking about latency or having to like reconfigure your bus structure or, any, or your gain structure or anything uh, to accommodate going from one thing to another. Uh, but just to fill people in, let's let's catch people up to speed here, because you know, as you guys mentioned, the song it's been a long time coming here. But uh, what did you guys kind of start as? You know, basically, where's our starting point for today's session? I know there's some tracks kind of already cooking inside uh, inside the session file. So, uh, kind of, what's your thought process and plan for uh, recording here today? Did you care? Sure. And I, just so everybody knows, uh, Spencer can't hear what Ben is saying. I'm a little bit of his interpreter, so. Um, He's just sort of talking about like what's our what's our pro what's our process been and it so like as Spencer mentioned they've been working on the song for a while so it kind of it started as a demo mm -hmm. and uh, and it, and sort of they built it up from there and I guess in in recent time they they kind of had a pretty fleshed out demo so that is mm -hmm. serving as our our pre production and the I mean there was there was some like some scratch guitars and Trevor had done a vocal. Um, and then they'd had, you know, I'll let, I'll let Spencer kind of take it from there, but there's a, there's a bunch of elements that exist that we are playing to, but this is sort of an opportunity to get the band on the song, and I'll just kind of turn it over to Spencer now. Yeah, and um, the, the demo, you know, the demo had, had programmed drums that we wanted, obviously, to replace with real drums and, and uh, get guitars in a room and bring the live performance thing to what we had and on it like that kind of technique of having some pre-pro stuff pre-pro percussion uh is something we kind of learned working with jakir on our uh album we did together daybreaker we came into the studio and had been rehearsing and, and playing learning the bands live and then he had some initial programming and percussion stuff that we were playing to and it was so exciting to like already hear things happening um to play along to it was way more exciting than just playing to a click, you know, from from the get go. Um, yeah. So that's something we've kind of taken with us a, as we continue to make our records. We'll we'll do some of the work to get some loops going, some stuff that kind of just makes it feel exciting and and makes it funner to play to. The feel of the band is is a little uh, looser and 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 funner if we're playing to some stuff that's inspiring and cool sounding. And it makes when you you know when you get to the tracking stage. Um, and and you're you're playing, and then you come back and listen, and you can hear it with that stuff. You get a, a better sense of the big picture of, of where you're headed, of what it might actually sound like as a as a finished record. Um, so you know some some of the things that we have, you know, like you mentioned, were uh, that we've been playing to as we've been working on it are just little percussion loops, like an 808 bass, something really low, so the bass player can kind of feel that while he's playing his part and doesn't have to overcompensate uh, necessarily by trying to get too low we we know that that's going to be there so it's it's there for us to reference um little nice. key flourishes and things um and then also should we talk about amber yeah you should so, explain so, ambers uh, yeah, yeah so, so um you know and, and i'll just quickly interject since i'm sp speaking up here um you know that what spencer just shared about us making the daybreaker album together and what we did and sort of like a what i sort of brought to the table in the pre-production uh, for, for making of that album, that sort of that was really sort of the beginning of our partnership working on records together because um, because I almost always in, um, except if it's a it's a live record you know if the, if it's not mm -hmm. that style of production I always call on Spencer to partner with me on some of the the pre production sort of building that foundational texture uh, for the for the albums um, and then so. You know, you, Amber's going to be performing saxophone with us, 
Uh, but you're going to hear the background vocals that she did and the sax parts she did. So I, I wasn't part of that. that. That's something that Spencer did with her. So I'll kind of turn it back over to you. Yeah, and uh, Amber, who you'll see play with us, Amber Woodhouse, is uh, a super talent that the band met uh, several years ago. I think the, fir the first uh, time we uh, encountered her and, and worked with her, she's played with us live and started sitting in uh, shows because we had a fair amount of songs that had sax parts, uh, and she sat in as a sax player. Um, and, I mean, for years now, she's been our go-to uh, on the road sax person. She's an amazing stage presence. Uh, she's also a phenomenal singer and um, uh, this song definitely called for big female background vocals and uh, nice. the cool thing well, about I mean, her voice we're, is we're sitting can... here teasing we're sitting here teasing folks. Uh, they're, oh, we're teasing sorry, right? I think they, I think <laughs> they want to cut to the chase. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, getting, um, I'm, I'm getting a lot of I'm getting a lot of yeah, eager yeah, eyes out there. Like so. they're like we yes yes and uh, but no dude this is uh, the cool part is like the you know this really represents a, a true to life process of demo pre production and then what we're gonna get to see uh, coming up here next is is how you kind of track this stuff live and adding live elements and adding in the energy of the band to a demo or pre-production tracks and uh, and then we're going to also see throughout the show how this evolves and how you can continue to layer on top of that and build a production um so i guess yeah uh, jakir if you if you wouldn't mind let's let's go ahead and get the band uh set up and ready to go uh, sure i'm gonna and, yeah sure i will um i'll have you go uh gather everybody out in the live room totally. and then i'll just uh I'll, i'm gonna give you just a little bit more context for for what we're going to be doing here but yeah, if you get everybody ready, we'll, yeah, we'll, see you we'll out there. transition. Awesome. See you out there, Spencer. So, yeah, we you know, so uh, we have pre-production that we're going to be playing to. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so you're going to be hearing the programming in Amber's parts and so forth. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, the band's going to perform so that we can show you the awesome impl uh, implementation of the way that the the Luna console, I mean, excuse me, the API console is working in Luna. Because um, there's some really cool seamless switching of uh, the way uh, DSP and, you know, processing power is managed and, um, you know, you have to actually be in record mode uh, to to show you the input paths and how that stuff is is working, and then when we you go out of record, we'll, Ben will Ben and I will kind of explain to you w what you're seeing and where where things are uh, how things are moving in the console and in sort of signal flow and processing. Um, so the band's going to play to the to the pre -pro, the pre production, um, mm -hmm. and then we will play you back yesterday's work. Um, yeah. and, and so that we can then start to talk about this DSP usage and how the console is uh, how the console is working. Awesome. One second. Uh, and I'm yeah, I'm 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 curious, just like everybody is at home, of uh, in terms of Apollos that you're rocking for today's show. Uh, yeah. I, I believe it's a couple of X8Ps and a twin, correct? It's three X8Ps and a nice. twin. Now the the twin is not really. An, I mean, in terms for of for my needs. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not, it's not there for me. It's actually to make this whole setup work and to get all these, to get, you know, we've got tons of microphones and cameras and uh, to be able to give the feed back to you guys so you can hear what's going on. But it's a, it's a 24 input uh, system. They're X8Ps so that I have mm -hmm. the ability to have up to 24 microphone inputs. I, I think, Dawson, do we end up at like 18 or something? Yeah, almost 20. Yeah. Almost, oh, okay. Dawson said uh, 20. So, um, nice. you know, because we got five band members, and uh, so they're out there ready. Um, awesome. Is there anything well, else you want to uh, talk about at the setup? You know, yeah, I think I think if I delay the music any longer, there's going to be a mutiny on our hands. So yeah, let's uh, let's let's throw it to the band, and uh, I think uh, Spencer is going to uh, kind of quickly introduce us to everybody, and then we'll uh, we'll hear a take. Absolutely. Okay. Take it away, Spencer. Before we get started, I want to take a second to introduce the band. Over here on keyboards, playing B3 today, Wes Bailey. On bass guitar, we got Tommy Putnam. In his own room over there on lead vocals and guitar, Trevor Turndrip. On drums, we got Tyler Ritter. 
And joining us today is very special guest Amber Woodhouse on saxophone and background vocals. And I guess we'll get to the song. Okay, so I am, let me just double check something in here, and then you guys can let me know if you're all set out there. Okay, it looks like I'm good to go in here. We ready out there? Yeah, I think so. Here it comes. Here. Kill uh, you all. Thank you. Wow. Dude, uh, uh, Aren't they great? Uh, yes. They, dude, that, that was awesome. Out of control. It sounds so rocking, man. Like everyone everyone in the chat is just they're just like, holy just, cow, that sounds so good. Like everyone's awesome. really, really blown away. And uh, you guys are like hope you guys at home are understanding, like that was just them tracking live. Like this is this isn't a final mix. This is you guys are in the middle of the production process right now, and you're getting to see how good these things can sound from the get go. And you know, Shakir, what's tell me, man? What's what's your secret? How do you get stuff to sound so good so fast like that? Well, you spend about a day ahead of time. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah, spend, just that. We, you know, we were here. We were here recording and kind of getting ourselves sorted out for about six hours yesterday. Uh huh. Well, dude, it makes all the difference in the world because it, right now, like that, that sounded like the record already. Like that's uh, that to me. Is oh, just, it gets better. 
Oh, man, you teasing, you teasing, I love it. What, uh, so I mean, you know, I love, you know, just while it's fresh, fresh in your ears right now, like to, what is, what is the API, what is having this available across every channel inside of Luna? What is that, what is that doing for you? What's, what's kind of the advantage of having something like this now uh, on every single channel? Well, I mean, I think, I mean, it's an end in it, it's an end to end emulation, which is something that has never existed in a DAW before. So, um, mm -hmm. you kind of have, you kind of have that gain structure that just, you know, makes it feel like you're pushing up against something, you know, like with the, the output stages, um, and you can kind of run the inputs a little bit hot, you know, but I think to mm -hmm. me, what is maybe one of the, um, uh, you want to switch this stuff? Um, sorry. Um, I think to me, what's one of the? Um, you can kind of just slide over here. Sorry, got to we've got to manage the space a little bit. Doing a little I think to me, what's one of the yeah, biggest the um, uh, advantages to this is you create the console is just part of the. You know, there's a console. Uh, what would you call it? instantiation sort of section? Where mm -hmm. the you know when you create a track, you can say that you want it to be a API. So you don't have floating window plugins. Um, you know it's a, it's all very yeah. immediate and it's like a desk. I mean you you know it's not tactile in the way the desk is, but there's EQs and dynamics and filters on everything, and it's just right mm -hmm. there. You don't got to click on something to open it up. You can just you know you have to tab through whether you want to look at the input where the filters are, the EQ, the dynamics. Um, you know, you have the five, uh, 550B EQs, and you also have the 560 EQs. It's all, yeah. th thanks man, um, it's all just right there, um, you know, ready to use. And then all the, all the busing architecture, uh, the 2500 uh, compressor is available on every bus, you know. And I have, it, I have it on two places, I have it on the drum bus and the, uh, the main output as a, as a, mix, a mix bus compressor. Dude, Jakir, I, mean, it, it, I, I just I'm echoing what people are saying here in the comments. Of like, people are blown away that this is. They just heard the tracking stage of this, and um, I think uh, it looks like you've got the band kind of joining it in there. And um, what'd be really cool to to kind of hear is you know, he kind of get some of their reactions as well. I know uh, you're having Dawson there pull up the kind of the the record version. Of it. We got high performance version now. We get to hear uh, the record version, which is using all the same settings and the same tracks. Uh, yep. It's just one of the performances from yesterday, uh, kind of put together. Uh, and there's enough people in the chat that are at, literally asking, "Can we hear that again, please?" Uh, yeah. How about I play so, before I bring the band in? How about I play you? Uh, you know, so so yeah. I mean, obviously they heard the work yesterday, um, but mm -hmm. you know, but I made some. I made a little bit of changes and rebalancing and so forth and so on. Um, cleaned up a couple edits, that kind of stuff. So, they, so I haven't really played it for them today, um, at, you know, kind of a little bit more fixed up, you know. Um, uh -huh. And there is a pretty, there is a, you know, I wouldn't call it, you know, it's not like night and day, but there is a pretty significant difference from being uh, where the, um, you know, the emulations, because when we're in record, it's very much like, uh, like a record, an analog recording situation where you do not hear the tape, you do not hear the sound of tape because you're on input when you record. It's not until you rewind and hit play that you actually yeah. get the, the feeling and the sound of what the tape is doing for you. Um, and then, you know, also uh, the, the busing can't really be, like the parallel or the bit of compression that I have on the drum bus is not really something, uh, or is that true? No. You do hear no, it. It'll by, yeah, it bypasses the buses. It, and yeah, there's yeah, a right. question in the chat asking about that as well. Uh, it bypasses so yeah, the buses, but the EQs and the EQ and dynamic stuff that I do, um, mm -hmm. you know, so this, if we look at this, so now you see I took it out of record and all the unison stuff, all the record effects, the compression EQ that I had that I decided to commit to tape, um, that goes away. That is part of the recording now. Um, but, yeah. but, some of the adjustments that I have made on the playback, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, using a little bit of the 560 EQ for just a little bit of subtle EQ, um, added some of the dynamics to the, uh, the snare drum, a uh, little bit of compression. And, you know, there's, there's a bit of, you know, it's just like um, I EQ'd the, the overheads picture a little bit more from tape. 
So what's mm -hmm. cool is while um, to have the low latency, um, you know, be able to hear that stuff in low latency, the, all this section of the desk here is on the uh, the Apollo DSP. Okay. Yeah. So, but when we switch, when I take it out of recorder and it switches uh, to to playback, all that stuff is still in place. We're still hearing it as it was, but the this is this stuff is now being run by the host. So, mm -hmm. so that all that DSP now. I mean, I still have all these plugins. I have, I have you know, I'm going to be able to build up a pretty like, what uh, what I'm doing, and this is how you can get to a finished sound much faster. Um, that stuff is all being run by the host, so that frees up the DSP, so that as I add tracks, um, you know, I'm able to, you know, use m more uh, Unison record effects stuff, and I'm, it's not infringing on my capacity of my DSP on the Apollos. That's awesome. Uh, I got a, a great question here before before we uh, hear the uh, the take of it. Uh, someone's asking, you know, you're super familiar with working on actual API desks. Sure. Does does the emulation does it have the same kind of punch and character that you associate with API consoles? Abs absolutely. You know, I I probably have you know I've got a pretty extensive history of record you know lot, lots and lots of records on API. I probably have done a little bit more on Neve, but um, I can say this is now. This is our third sort of um, you know event like this. We started with Cast, we did the K Club, and now we're doing Moon mm -hmm. Taxi. Um, now, in in the in the case of Cast Cast's recording, we did use some of the studio, but with the K Club, yeah. it was all in the box. This is all in the box, and I I I feel like I feel like I'm recording on this desk. You know the the yeah. result, like the sound of it, um, and the result. Um, to me, it's like, no, it's not exactly the same experience and, you know, and all desks are a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. but at the, at the end of it, when I hit play and I listen back and I walk away from the session at the end of the day, um, I have the same, you know, I have the same feeling, uh, of experiencing and using the equipment, uh, that I did, in, you know, on an analog desk. So it's, I don't really. I'm only thinking about it and talking about it because it's a little bit new to me, a little bit newer to me, and it, and it's something I, you know, something that people are curious about. I'm curious about. It. That's that's one of the reasons that you know originally, like Ben, we did that that shootout with Jamie, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, exactly. I kind of just wanted to see how you know how close we could get, how this stuff worked, and I mean we've come leaps and bounds, especially with Luna. Luna just sounds incredible, you know, and just because I get asked this a lot. Um, mm -hmm. No, I don't use Pro Tools anymore unless I have to, and I'm all mm -hmm. in Luna. And it's not, be, it's you know, the o the only reason is I made I've made hundreds of records, and it's all about the sound for me. Uh, and the reason is is because it gives me a sonic advantage. Um, it's not perfect yet. It's you know, it's a huge job to get to create this platform, um, and there's a lot to come, and there's a lot of hard work being done. Um, but I believe it's a studio of the future, and I walk away with the same feeling of working. That's, you know, I work away the, that, with the same feeling. And at the end of the day, all I'm trying to do is get to a creative environment, creative result faster. You know, of course I want it to sound good. That's, I live and die by the sound. But you know, yeah. I, I, I'm not. I don't. I'm not lacking. Dude, uh, that's that's so amazing. That's such. I hope I hope that's resonating with everybody at home. Just like how big of a statement that is of like. This is giving you the same experience, the same, you're walking away having had the same experience, getting the same results that you want. Because it's, for you, I know it's it's not a thing where you'd want to compromise how it, something sounds ju just for the sake of a, a workflow or for, you know, for using the latest technology. It literally, the thing that matters most at all times is how does it sound? How does it feel? How does it make the musicians perform? How does it help you make records? end of the day, that's all that actually really matters. And if you're getting those results and you're, you're getting that same experience that you're used to now inside the box, man, that's, uh, I can't tell you how good that, that is to hear. It's totally true. I mean, you know, like for years I, I, you know, mixed in a hybrid just because it just, you couldn't, you know, as technology has gotten better, I've moved more and more towards, you know, kind of more in the box because it's, it is really about creativity. I mean, I'm honestly, I love, listen, I love a analog recording environment, but it is, but there's a lot of things that dictate if that's the right move. 
Mm -hmm. And you know, some I, I, and I still embrace that. I still love that. I love that experience. It's like it's something familiar, and it's a it's a it's a different experience. Um, so I embrace that. But what I can say is that what what this type of environment affords me is it's you know it's, I can try compressors and EQs. I don't have to worry about the patch bay. I don't. Is it yep. like is the is the unit working? It's just like boom, boom, boom. It's really fast. I'm honestly less fatigued at the end of the mm. day because it's just. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to get up out of my chair and run around all the time, you know, or ask somebody, you know, or wait for somebody else to help me do it. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's just a lot of advantages to it. And, and honestly, I wouldn't, you know, uh, I don't want, you know, I, somebody can call BS on me, I, whatever. Uh, uh, but I wouldn't do it if I didn't believe, you know, if I didn't believe it. Because at the end of the day, even though I've, uh, I feel like I, 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 you know, of course I've, I've had successes, but, you know, it really in this business and like a lot of businesses or less a lot of things in life it's like what did you do last you know it's yeah. like if if i made one great record and then made you know 50 crappy ones well then we wouldn't be sitting here talking it's all, it's just you got every time you got to go improve yourself so i'm not about to compromise um mm -hmm. so you know having said that ben should we play them this track let's hear it i'd love to hear it is the band uh is the band in there with you to do you, do you want me to well? play do you want me to get them to play it back uh, you want yeah go ahead yeah go ahead and, okay. yeah bring them okay. in so that way okay. they can they can hear and I'd I'd love to kind of uh, poke at them yeah, a little bit and in. see uh, see what they feel about it too okay yeah yeah nice man people people in the comments are, are absolutely loving it and a lot of people are echoing your experience there Shakir of like this is you know a lot of folks here a lot of Luna fans are are hanging out with us today and the big thing is that they're really uh, they're all feeling the same sort of thing of like Luna actually sa has a sound to it this is a DAW that like feels it doesn't just feel like a, a piece of technology or like a it's not a transactional thing it's a it's a thing where they really are getting a sound and feedback from the device itself and uh and then now having the power to choose so many different uh you know be able to choose having an entire console emulation throughout the whole thing it's just they're all seeing how this is kind of where luna is building to and how this is is adding to the story absolutely so everybody's everybody's joined me so we're uh awesome. Have we changed camera angles? Yep, I think we're on the GoPro now. So okay, yeah, cool. you wanna wanna go ahead and play back play back the yeah. song. Let's I, so, I just I want to hear the whole thing again because I, I was absolutely loving how it sounds already. And then uh, and then yeah, I would love to hear back from the band what their experience was uh, working through this with you. Okay, so um, everybody is flipping out about how cool it sounds, and, and now I'd like to play you kind of like uh, the whole thing from what we did yesterday with a, with a little bit of extra work that I've done.
Sounds great. We did yeah. pretty good, yeah, I think, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what, uh, you know, to me, it's just like, it just sounds a little bit more finished. Uh, I mean, what would you, what do you guys think about, like, you know, the experience of yesterday, kind of hearing on headphones and sort of getting to kind of come in here and sort of hear our progress where it's at? Uh, I mean, the main thing to me, I mean, the, the whole allure of, you know, a console for a band tracking situation is getting that kind of cohesion of everyone running through, you know, the same sound and stuff that kind of imprints that sound on the band. Uh, and we have to keep reminding ourselves that even though this board's in front of us, that we're not actually using it because mm -hmm. it seems every everything else, you know, sounds and feels like we're going through a console. And... Uh, the you know the Apollos are back there and we don't even see them so it it feels it feels you know like what we're used to uh, in a in a studio situation when we get to use you know beautiful consoles um, and it already you know like J.K. was saying it already kind of has that sort of cohesive put together finished sound uh, that you look for uh, through these things. Any, any any other thoughts from anybody? I mean, it just sounds like it's finished. Yeah. yeah. Like um, pre-mixing, I guess. So. Um, well, well, it's clear. It's warm. Ben, do you have any? Do you have any? Do you have any, do you have any questions? questions? Maybe you could help me, like, sort of dialogue with them about. Yeah. Or? So I mean, you know, it, totally. Well, I mean, the uh, you know the big thing. We had a couple of people asking about you know the Q setup um, that you guys were running for this. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of like, what were the musicians given when they're out there tracking, uh, and, and how's that compare to what they're hearing now? Well, they're sort of asking about the like the headphone experience. I mean, um, we have you know the the way it's set up. We have eight headphone sends. So the way that it's set up is the all the because the the programming and pre-production stuff is sort of very it's very stereo and there's a lot of there's a lot of small interplay for them to play to. We have that in stereo, but then everybody is kind of has an individual feed and it's mm -hmm. it, it is it's mono so obviously going from mm -hmm. a mono sort of bit of a mono headphone experience you know there's going to be a little bit of difference coming here that but like i mean what else would well, you say I mean, about also like i have my bass crank on you know so i get in here and i get to see the full audio, audio mm -hmm. spectrum mm -hmm. get to really get to really experience what everyone's doing and not just so much of me I, my headphone mi mix was kind of similar to what we're hearing in here of course you know it's it's way wider. I don't know if that is mm -hmm. the the speaker setup we have here in the control room. Uh, it's it's way punchier in here. You know, there's just there's that that immediacy of the kick and of Spencer's like low detuned guitar. It's just it's very it's it's a vintage punch that that I'm I'm loving nice. in here. You you feel anything on the drums? It's sort of different. Yeah, different. I mean, just the the sound of the kick alone is. I mean, not drastically different, but just exceptionally better. And it was already great in the headphones. And it's crazy to hear hear it coming out of that and just almost sounding finished. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could experience, when we came in here to list, I could experience everything. Like, I noticed Tyler's, you know, hi-hat more. Like how I opened it up, I guess. Did you open it up? Yeah. You did? Yeah, yeah. I opened it up in the, in the chorus, you know, whereas in the headphones, I wouldn't really pay attention to any of that. And the I, clarity's kind of there. It's yeah, make, it's make, make very you, clear. Making you listen to everything. Yeah. Like everything has its place. Yes, you know, like yes. you can see in space and time correctly. where everything is. Yeah, yeah. sitting where it is. Well, I yeah. think there's like really great dimension in the textures overall that you can actually hear every part very clearly mm -hmm. and beautifully. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, there is a, there is, I mean, that's one of the hallmarks, I guess, of an API is that there is, a, like, there is a real mid-range forwardness and a clarity um, and I think, yeah, and the tape emulation, you know, paired with, the, the tape emulation paired with the, the, the tone or the tonality of the console really lends itself to sort of gluing things together and kind of, you know, facilitating the feelings that, they're always feeling like the depth of field and the texture of it, you know, and the way mm -hmm. it kind of all blends together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and are you, using, are you using the same tape across all the channels or are you kind of mixing and matching? Across the no, the, the tape the tape uh, is exactly the same for every, everything. It's just you know like if you know, not a not a customized uh, sort of tape setup or you know, and I'm not I'm not mixing and matching stuff. Not to say that we may not get into that, but uh, no, it's just a I, I chose 
uh, what I felt like was the best, you know, tape formula, tape speed for, for the, uh, you know, what where we want to sort of place this, voice it, you know, texturally and genre-wise, so forth. Yeah, so it's the same. Right. That's awesome. Well, then, uh, yeah, man, I think the you know the things I'm always curious about when it when it comes to stuff like this is like, uh, you know. The, the decisions that you make because I know you love to commit to stuff on the way in uh, so in so, some people if you were kind of watching really closely in the screen as you're tracking in you'll notice each one of the tracks as you're bringing them in you're running them through the API preamp uh, mm -hmm. which is you know it emulates the 212 API preamp from the vision console uh, but then you on some tracks you'll commit you'll do like some EQ happening on the way in and then you're also using you know the EQ and dynamics and the vision console emulation further down the track. Um, I guess does that kind of match a workflow that you would do normally in a studio, say with like a split console configuration? Uh, absolutely, yeah. They're, they're just sort of asking about the, the the way I'm committing to some of compression and EQ effects on the way in, um, and then also doing a little bit uh, you know sort of post just for us to listen to. And so yeah, the answer is yes. That's that is sort of my normal workflow. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's not many consoles where you do have that, you, you know, that sort of that split ability. You know, typically, you know, you're using the console for its main inputs, and then the monitor section is just very simple. It's just a very simple balance. This is kind of yeah. a step beyond that because I'm now able to actually um, add additional dynamic control, additional EQ, and kind of refine it a little bit. So it's like it's almost like I'm able to take a further step that you're not necessarily able to do in a traditional setup as well mm -hmm. and it's you know I like to commit uh, to sounds as much as possible and, and and all of them as players musicians you know they you know we're we're all at the source you know we're all trying to create as much of our sound you know at the source and kind of get our setup the way we want it uh, you know it's it, it, and it's just you know it's it's as simple as things like how Wes is set the draw bars on the on the on the organ and you know just like the the bass that tommy picked you know it's just like yeah. we used the ua, the UA pedals the ua yeah. pedals on trevor's setup uh mm -hmm. you know we kind of you know got things that are like interesting and committed and and sort of commit to that so they're doing that at the source you know we're picking things and i'm committing to shaping those sounds in a in a very broad stroke way to kind of get it to fit the way I want it to, so that then the smaller gestures that I'm making, um, sort of in that secondary level of, of processing, is is almost like a step in towards step towards like what I'd be doing in a mix. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I mean, this is a, this feels like a, a great way for us to kind of continue forward in the production process, uh, which I believe uh, we've got a couple of overdubs that we need to get done on the song as well. Um, so this would be a good chance for folks to kind of see see kind of how you're setting up these channels uh, and then also just how this whole emulation works uh, now kind of overdubbing pieces mm -hmm. uh, pieces on top of uh, on top of the production um, so what uh, what do you have in, what do you guys have in mind in terms of overdubs for the song well we uh, so we're now we're going to kind of transition into our, our sort of our overdubs and we uh, we had talked about some per we talked about some percussion uh, and there's a guitar there's a guitar part we have for the end, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's there's a guitar part that we have for the end. We haven't recorded yet, uh, and then um, uh, we'd sort of talked about um, maybe doing a, a mini moog as well to kind of go to, to to go with the riff and kind of fatten it up a little bit more. Um, so uh, yeah, I guess we can while um, we can start to set that up. Um, yep. Maybe, yep. maybe we'll start with maybe Kunga. Is that what we said? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Start. We'll start with Kungas. And um, so I'm going to go out there and kind of get that get that set up with Tyler. And then um, while I'm doing that, uh, we can also sort of visit everybody's uh, station and kind of look at their setup and kind of talk a little bit about microphone choice and what you know what what, what we've got going. And then Dawson, yeah. if you would um, uh, at least if you'd create the tracks for a, a conga, but then just uh, just kind of get it set up, and then I'll I'll come back in and I'll instantiate. Um, or the, or whatever we're gonna, whatever I decide to use for a record okay. path. Okay. But if you kind of get the, the the track created with the vision for just for Kunga right now. Yeah, just okay. for Kunga. Nice. Cool. So while uh, while Shakir's running out to the live room there, uh, we'll. 
Dawson's going to set some stuff up here on the computer. I can kind of I'll hit a few of the a few of the questions I see uh, folks are asking about. Uh, yeah, so we're running this. This whole session is being run on a MacBook Pro. I believe it's an i9, one of the one of the latest generation. Uh, I'm at, or MacBook Pros, um, and in terms of the cues, guys, uh, you may uh, hopefully you might get a look here in a little bit at, at what the mixer window looks like. But essentially, the way as Jakir kind of spelled out when we were talking there a few minutes ago, he's using each cue. Uh, you know, Luna can have up to four real-time cues. So what he's doing is he's, he's splitting those. So using the left side of Q1 and the right side for two different sources, say for like a vocal and a bass. Guitar one, guitar two. So he's essentially getting eight different monitor cue feeds all happening in real time. And then those are getting passed out through the studio's headphone system. And you guys will probably see at each one of these stations as we go out to the live room, you'll see that each one of them, they have a, a personal mixer that they can get to uh, to be able to customize a mix that's ultimately going into their, into their uh, headphones. Uh, so let me see, I think they're, yeah, they're setting up up there. Uh, and of course, uh, you guys, uh, as always, keep on keep on hitting us up with questions here in the chat. Uh, doing our best to keep the show moving forward, but also hitting your guys' questions along the way. Uh, and it's and I can just say, man, it's been super cool seeing all of you guys' reactions to how good this sounds. And uh, I 100% agree with you. It's this is a, a super rad process to be able to see and have it sound so good so fast is is absolutely incredible. Um, so let's see, Jakir, you, uh, you guys out there, you got Brian out there with you on, on the camera as well? Yeah, Brian's here with me. Yeah, so I thought we'd Perfect. just kind of go around to, uh, um, are you going to stay on that camera, Brian? Yes? Okay. Um, so, uh, Ben, could you kind of, because I, uh, can you lead me through what you want me to talk about? Like, where should we start? Yeah, well, let, let's, yeah, let's start the, uh, I guess, it looks like right now you're next to, uh, let, let's start with the drums. Uh, that's Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's everyone's fav favorite instrument to capture. What uh, what were you guys using in terms of uh, mics and, and mic setup there on the drums? Okay. Well, I will. Um, you know, because because uh, we have a stationary camera, so I'm gonna uh, I'll, I'll sort of walk you through like what I was, why I set up the way I set up, and I'll I'll kind of I'll point out what I have and where why. Okay. So. Awesome. Um. Um. Hold on one second. Um, I'll be right back. <laughs> hey, uh, get a get a little interference can, there. <laughs> uh, can you come out and unplug all the headphones? Yeah. Everybody, this this is Skylar. She works at Sound Emporium. Um, <laughs> she's gonna unplug the headphones. She's gonna unplug the headphones for us so I can talk to you uh, and they can have some playback in there. Okay, so awesome. drum kit. I wanted to do I wanted to do something very uh, you know, it's um, very simple. It's you know, we didn't there's no toms involved in this. It's just it's very much about the groove. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. and originally the 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 stuff that we're replacing was just a kick and a snare sample um, with the other programming. So basically we took out the kick and the snare sample um, and Tyler is basically playing this a similar groove with a performance feel some some flourishes but I wanted to keep it very simple because the 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 song was in the production originally before I, I was involved is built very much around a, a very primary kick and snare uh, sound so um, and it and they're also very kind of they're samples they're very you know sort of very punchy full tough sounds um, so I uh, so I wanted it's a simple drum kit and you'll you know I'm using the R88 uh, as you know which I would typically use as an overhead or a room mic uh, but instead of putting it over the kit um, which you know which is very nice for like an overall capture it doesn't by putting it down here I'm getting a little bit more of the of the shells you know I'm getting a little bit more of the direct punchy sound of it and I've got it in close. Mm -hmm. And because it's in a, you know, because it's a, um, a, 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 not an XY, but a Bloomline stereo pair, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's very wide. And I've kind of positioned it equally between uh, the ride cymbal and the hi-hats. Uh, so I'm getting, I'm getting a very close kit sound that's stereo, and, and it's giving me my width on the, the brighter elements. Um, the way that I mic the kick drum, um, I used an NS10 speaker. Now, I didn't use it just simply for the sub, and, and you'll, you'll see if, when we go back to the session, you might observe that it's actually louder 
than the other kick drum mic. Um, and I put in that the other kick drum mic is a 421. And I, I didn't put the 421 inside the drum because I don't want too much of a rock sound. I don't want it, I don't want the it to be too articulate and, and, and too much attack. I kind of want a, mm -hmm. a warmer, punchier sound. Um, so the mics are kind of just a few inches out in front of the kick drum. Uh, the, uh, you know, and the NS10 is not serving just as a, I just want to be clear about that, it's not serving as just a sub microphone. Um, so there's a blend of those. Um, and then over here, on just on the other side of the shell of the kick drum is a is an RCA Veracoustic, and that's a ribbon mic. Um, it's a mic from the 40s. It's very similar. has a It's very similar to a, a, a 77. Um, and uh, you know, I've got it on this side of the kick drum because I'm using it. I'm using it. The kick drum is a little bit of a baffle uh, mm -hmm. to to shield away from the, the 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 snares and the overly bright sound of the snare. Um, and really yep. trying to get some of that thump from the shell over here on the uh, on the kit the kick drum, and it and it kind of it helps fill in the sound of the kick and the snare in that sort of like forward samply punchy thing that I'm trying to emulate as much as possible. And then um, so then that kind of gets into the snare mics that I chose. I chose an SM7 um, mm -hmm. just because of its uh, it's a, it, it makes a good snare mic because it just has so much, so much thick body to it. Um, and then I have a, 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 a salt shaker mic. I forget the model number of it. Uh, with those, it's a 600 something. Uh, but it's an Electro Voice microphone. It is a very mid rangey very spitty um, sounding microphone. So I'm, you know, I'm the dominant blend of the, in the snare drum picture is the SM7, and I'm just blending in a little bit of the salt shaker mic to, uh, to kind of give us some of that snare splat. And then um, the last drum microphone that I have is, uh, is another ribbon mic, um, and it's, it's, it's back here behind the kit. Um, but, you know, so, so Tyler's body is kind of in, it's in between, Tyler is sort of, in between the snare drum and where it's placed, it's down low back here, um, and then there I'm just trying to get that thumpy, you know, close kit sound. Um, and and those, you know, these two ribbon mics are actually kind of adding a lot of body and interesting character to uh, the drum sound. the the kick The kick drum mics themselves are give us giving us some of that close focus and some of that low end weight that I'm getting off the NS10. But it's it's really um, you know, all of these mics are very much a part of the sound. Uh, there, if you, if we were to turn off the, the these mono ribbon mics, we lose a lot of character and punch and sort of tonality of the drums. Um, so, you know, in the room, there's uh, uh, microphones here on the drums, and the only other microphone in the in the room is for Amber to play sax on, and it is a um, it's a U87 that has a tube mod. Um, I don't, I don't know very much about it, but it's one of the great mics they have here at Sound Emporium. And you know, um, uh, I, 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 I shot this out versus the, the RCA 77, and this was just a better, a better microphone for the capture. So, um, you know, in the way, you know, just, just to give a little, you know, I'm not, I'm micing, I'm micing this part of the horn at a little bit of distance. You can't really see it, and I don't want to touch her instrument without, you know, without her permission. But um, I'm not. I'm sort of where her hands are, so I'm getting a little bit of the mm -hmm. getting a little bit of the bell, but I'm also getting some of the body of the instrument. Um, and then, uh, well, you know, Wes is on the uh, a Hammond B3, and we can't take the camera into the sound locker over there. But I'm using a pair of 57s on the on mm -hmm. the top, uh, and a FET 47 on the bottom of the Leslie cabinet. Um, so Spencer's guitar. Uh, is is out here. We're using an ox box on Spencer and um, and Trevor for their guitar sounds. Um, I have this uh, this old 16 millimeter film projector amp. Um, so it's a it's a uh, it's a film projector from the 50s. I'm guessing uh, that I found on eBay. Had it turned into a guitar amp because it has a tube amp in it. So this so this is serving as uh, Spencer's guitar amp. Uh, it just has a volume and a tone control on it, um, and uh, the speaker output from the film projector is into the aux box. So I I love these things. I 
Um, as much as I love recording guitars and setting up amps, um, more often than not these days I'm using the auxes because the result is amazing. So Spencer's on an aux um, with the film projector and then mm -hmm. um, in here, uh, are you able to, to pivot? Okay, cool. So we're going to go in here to the vocal booth where Trevor's setup is. Um, so, uh, oh, here's the camera. Okay, so, um, so we're using a Marshall, uh, uh, a Marshall's, I think it's a Super Lead 100. So it's like an old, it's an old Marshall tube amp. And, oh, I think I can hear the Bluetooth kind of cutting out a little bit. Oh, but that's yeah, right, you've got the... That's yeah, okay because I got the lab. still hearing you on the lab, so that yeah, you yeah, I forgot. Sorry, um, it's super confusing listening <laughs> on these Bluetooth speakers and the whole situation. But um, so sorry about that. Uh, and so we got an aux set up for 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 Trevor. We you can't really see them, and I don't want to pick them up. But we are using we are using all three of the new uh, pedals. So we've got a little bit of delay on the Starlight pedal. A little bit of modulation on the Astra, and then we're using the Golden for a little bit of reverb. Uh, he, Trevor's playing a Tele of mine, um, and then the vocal mic is a U67. So that's the setup out here, um, and then I guess everything else is just in the control room in Luna on the uh, on the API console. Is that uh, does that cover it, Ben, or? Anything else? Yeah, I think I think so. Uh, the okay, I sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to be, go on and on about it, but I just I thought some of that stuff would be interesting. Oh, dude, absolutely. People, uh, people in the comments are are loving kind of getting the run through here, and uh, I mean, what I'm what I'm always impressed about with your setups, man, is the uh, e the purpose of each microphone, and you you kind of know each each mic is pick, chosen and placed with a a goal in mind of capturing a certain kind of, a look, you know, especially like on the drums, right? Where you've got multiple mics, each one's got a purpose to kind of fill out the sound in a different way. Uh, and this is one of the cool things I always love, you know, kind of getting to geek out on your sessions after the fact is hearing the variety that you're creating, but then most importantly, how they all end up blending and working together. That's really what ultimately matters to the final production. Absolutely, man. I, I appreciate you saying that. Um, yeah, it's, it really is about a combination of things. I, you know, uh, I wish... Uh, you know, obviously, the simp I believe the simpler you can record, the better. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, and often I just use a single microphone on kick and snare. But because, you know, but I also have more microphones on the instrument because I have toms and maybe I want to get a little bit more of an ambient picture. In this case, because it is small and I'm trying to get something that sounds compact and tough and just really articulate and punchy, you know, I needed... I needed to pair these different microphones together so that so that I could have that articulation and and yeah I mean an SM7 sounds way different than a salt shaker mic but the combination yeah. of the two is you know it's like it's like putting two microphones on a on a on a guitar amplifier you know you might put a put a 57 that's just like a dynamic mic mic and then you might put a ribbon or a condenser so that you have those two distinct flavors that you can find the tonal balance that fits where you want to go with it so I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anything yeah. else to talk about uh, out here before we get Tyler? Uh, two questions for you. Uh, one's yeah. a super easy one for the for the auxes. Are you running those in mono or are you taking a stereo line out from those? That's a good question. I always take them stereo, and I do. I I um, I I uh, the close mics that are on the amp. Uh, I pan that all hard to one side. And then the mm -hmm. room. I always use the room sound too. I pan that on the other side, so it do, it ah. does two it does two things for me. It allows me to have a nice stereo image for the guitar, and but I can mm -hmm. independently blend, you know, maybe for the whole song or different sections, um, how much ambience there is. And I I could pan them back over top of each other later if I want to, but it's a way to to capture not only a cool stereo image, but have, have those be discreet from one another, the room tone versus the, the close mic. 
That's that's super smart. I think actually I've still I, I've I've done the same thing. I'm pretty sure I learned it from you on a different session of yeah using those close mics and blending them inside the app to get your direct sound and then panning that room mic to the other side. So now you've got you've got two channels to play with after the fact. You can you know you can tweak that blend. You can pan them around differently. Uh, so yeah, mm-hmm. that's uh, for any Ox users out there. That's a, a super a really really powerful tip for and a good reason to take it always in stereo. Um, the Definitely. other, uh, the other question I was seeing is, uh, people asking about the bass setup. Um, yes. so I believe you're going, you're just going in direct, but is there any, any special stuff in the, in the chain there? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. We did kind of skip over the bass. Um, yeah, the bass is just direct. Um, and mm-hmm. I have, um, uh, a, um, what is this pedal called? I have an Earthquaker Devices Dunes pedal. So just to add a little bit of grit, you know, because we're not we're not using an amp. I, I don't really feel like I need an amp at this point. I mean, I at this point mm-hmm. um, kind of rely on the amazing uh, emulation of the B15 or the SVT. If I want to add an amp sound, then I will just duplicate um, my DI track in the session and then throw the amp on it. But um, yeah, mm-hmm. Tommy is playing um, uh, a Fender Jazz bass. Uh, with flat wounds, he's playing with a pick. Uh, it's just going through the dunes pedal uh, into a DI, and then the rest of uh, the rest of it's being done uh, in Luna um, using um, uh, some EQ and uh, a 160, a DBX 160 compressor. And I don't know if anybody's noticed, but the the uh, the new the updated uh, 160 is awesome. Uh huh. That was that's a little. That was a little. Uh, it snuck in there in the release notes yesterday, and we didn't get a chance to talk about it in yesterday's show. But I'm glad you brought that up, Jakir, because yeah, the DBX160. Uh, if you guys already know it and love it, you'll notice it got it got a, a little bit of a facelift, or actually a major facelift. Major. It's now it's no longer the tiniest plugin on your screen. It's now Retina compatible. But more importantly, it also now has a mix control. Uh, which if you're like me and you're addicted to the DBX160 as like a drum crusher. Having that having that parallel uh, built into the plugin now is, uh, yeah, that's awesome. It's badass, um, yeah, for sure. It's so badass. Nice, man. Well, uh, yeah, Jakir, dude, uh, again, kudos from the chat of kind of walking us through everything in the setup and, and getting a chance to really see uh, see how you've kind of you know configured all the microphones and uh, people are just like they could they're all saying that they could sit here for hours and hear you talk about mics and, and stuff like that uh, but I do I know we also got some we got some work to do here still of, uh, of doing some overdubs yeah. um, so you said you were gonna set up for some percussion some uh, some congas first uh, how, uh, how are you gonna set up those what, what sort of mic and mic position do you typically use for capturing those? Well, I'm using uh, I'm using a 251, uh, just because it's mm-hmm. I know that it's going to be it's going to have a lot of fidelity. Uh, you know, it's it's got a nice top end. I'm not going to have to, you know, crank up a bunch of EQ. I mean, I uh, I'm honestly I mean it depends on the you know the texture and the and the, um, the you know the genre where we're headed. Sometimes I use like a darker microphone on it or like 421, but in this case. I feel like with a nice tube mic that's really articulate, especially as much um, as activity and and contribution as the pr- the pre-production programming. There's a there's a lot of little cool uh, swagger and percussive stuff going on in the track. I really want to make sure that this cuts. So uh, yeah. I'm choosing a brighter a brighter more sensitive mic. Um, I'll probably end up compressing it a bit more than I might with uh, more like a dynamic or a ribbon. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, I, I'm more, I, I'm more of like a, I approach things more mono in general in terms of capture. It's just typically for me, I just, uh, even if I am using a stereo pair, I put them in different spots so that I'm catching, catching something that's a little bit more distinct. Just in terms of miking technique, I mean, you know, Tyler's going to be, he's going to be playing both the drums. So I'm just, you know, I'm just splitting them in the middle. You know, I'm just going to, I'm placing the mic in the, basically in the middle. Um, mm-hmm. And of course, I always refine um, mic placement by by actually listening in there, uh, and and sort of you know does does it feel like it's 
doesn't have enough low end, you know, if it doesn't have enough low end, move it closer so you get a little bit of proximity effect, like how much ambience do I want, you know, it's just like, if this ends up, you know, it's kind of over the drums a little bit, if this ends up being, having too much transient, I might like, I might back the mic away and get it away from over the top, so that, you know, because mm -hmm. the drum, because of the shape of the drum and where the skin is, a lot of the, a lot of the transient percussive energy is gonna kind of be shooting straight up. So if I put the mic back a little bit, it's going to roll off some of that. You know, it really is about using mic placement and positioning. Um, uh, you know, it's even I would go back to the way the snare drums are mic'd. I don't have the mics over the drum because I don't want too much of the attack. I, I kind of cheated them off the drum a little bit so that I was getting a little bit more of the shell because I'm wanting that punchy tone. of I, I, I'm not going for so much of a, like a rock or pop snare drum where it has to really cut. Um, you know, where I'd want to be over the drum a little bit more. Now, of course, you're going to get some, you know, it, get it in close over the drum, you get some proximity, you get some low end, but I'm trying to get the, 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 this sort of mid-tone off, off the shell by having it back. So, you, you know, it's just kind of a miking technique. So, yeah, we're going to do, we're going to do a, uh, a kunga overdub, and I think then we'll probably um, do a clap overdub over the same mic, and we'll get, we'll get the, the group out here on headphones and do that, but we're going to start with this. Nice. Uh uh, great. Well, dude, I'll let you. I'll let you get to work on placing the mics, getting everybody situated, and uh, I think you know we're just we're we're here along for the ride. Especially something like this, so it, it'll be really interesting to show people kind of the back and forth process that you go through of mic adjustment and channel strip adjustment, and how uh, how this all gets dialed in. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you to it and, and let you uh, let you get to work here for a little bit. Thanks, man. All right, uh, cool. I'm uh, looking forward to continuing. Awesome. All right. Well, while, while he's getting all that stuff set up, um, scrolling back here through through the questions, uh, I did see a couple of people asking questions about uh, about the possibility of a Luna session uh, out of these tracks. Maybe. No, absolutely, guys. That's uh, the, we really love sharing this stuff with you guys, and yeah, that's the the idea, the plan here uh, to clue you guys in. We'll see a little bit here into the future. Is that uh. Yeah, we're, we're going to spend today, uh, obviously this show is all about the tracking and overdubbing process of the song. Uh, and then from here, uh, we'll chat with Shakir a little bit later about, uh, about what, the, what the next steps in the process will look like. But just know that ultimately this is going to get mixed all inside of Luna. And then uh, that Luna session will be available for you guys to download and check out here in the, in the coming months. Um, and it'll be a, a good chance for you guys to revisit these shows and hear the tracks, uh, how, how he captured them, how the Vision Channel Strip was a part of it, uh, and then ultimately where he gets to uh, in the final mix. And we'll do a whole, uh, we'll do a whole release show and, and, and break down the mix uh, with Shakir when that's ready to go. Uh, so yeah, just uh, I want to make sure everyone at home feel safe, guys. We're, you guys are getting a Luna, another Luna session out of this one. Uh, but hopefully in the meantime, you guys have already gone into the app and downloaded the Cold War Kids Luna session uh, that we released yesterday with uh, with Carlos. Um, so yeah, I think they're, Jakir's getting in there and, and starting to set up, so let, I'll let him uh, take over and uh, show you guys what this overdub process looks like. Okay, so um, what we've got here is we, we instantiated a track, so let's say, you know, like if I was going to make a new track, I'll be right with you, bud. Um, so when you, I'll be right with you, Tyler. Uh, um, when you create, when you create, sorry, <laughs> uh, not used to talking to all, so many people at the same time. Um, when you create a new <laughs> track, you can, you, there's, this, there's this console uh, um, selection that you make. So you, you, API vision, and then when you create a new track, then it automatically puts um, it automatically puts the uh, the new console in there for you. And then as soon as you arm it, then it's going to pull up the uh, the preamp. Um, so so that's kind of what, like what's happened. And I just added a little added an LA three A just for a little bit of dynamic control because obviously. Uh, well, maybe not so obviously, but a kunga is kungas are very dynamic. So um, yeah, they are. <laughs> they are. Um, Tyler, how are you? Ha do you have some level in your phones? Okay, cool. Um, so I'm gonna have you. I think I think what we want to do is we just um, actually could you grab Spencer just yep. yeah. 
Uh, I think what we had, and maybe maybe you know, uh, I think what we talked about is just in the bridge. Is that right? That was your understanding? Okay. Um, well, oh, oh, sorry, hold on. Say again. We talked about possibly going to the left, but then it's really right. Okay, okay. What, uh, well, I'm just going to confirm with, with him. And um, uh, let's just loop the bridge just to kind of get, get, get it going. We were just are we just doing this in the in the bridge only, right? Yeah. 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 Oh. So just bear with me there. I am getting us to the bridge. I'm just gonna loop that up. I got I got some level going. Um, how we how how's the, how the headphones? You hearing yourself okay? Okay, cool, cool. Um, I, I've been thinking about this. Okay. I think you can save the really fast thing for like just the last two times. Last two times. Kind of save that little moment and keep it more in that vein, right? And as it kind of yeah. Do you want me to do anything during the just where Tommy's still, still on, on the A flat? I think it could be cool if you if that's actually where you start. Like if you okay. if you come in with it, base okay. base in that. Cool. So we might need to give him a little. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you I'll give you a couple bars of it before the the breakdown because he's yeah coming in right at the top of the section sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. Well, let's give this uh, let's give this a try. Uh, right. You ready, sir? Yeah. Oh. I think we I think we just stick to the the, the bridge a eh? okay cool uh, I mean that felt like a great great start um, maybe just one one more time to kind of get yeah, for, for the pocket a little bit there towards the end uh, all right here we go again We feel good about that. How about you? Yeah. Awesome. Um, let me just check one thing real quick. So, take this out of input. so yeah. So I, when I take it out of when I take it out of record, um, our preamp path goes away, and and the LA3A. So that's committed to tape. Um, so now we're just going to mm -hmm. listen back, and I've, you know, this this section is just on our playback. So I've filtered off just a little bit of the bottom end just to kind of clean up the, mm -hmm. 
Oh, I was trying to. I didn't actually engage it. So now let's see how that is. And I might do this like a little bit of further EQ. So we're just going to listen, bud, for a sec. Kind of doing a little bit of a demo here as well. So okay, thank you. Come on. I think I think we're good. I think we're good on that. I think uh, we are gonna get set up for some claps. I'm just gonna play with play with my sound just a little bit more. But um, if uh, you'd hang out out there, we're gonna get a few folks together to do some claps. And and the claps would go from this bridge, bridge on out. out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring the party vibe a little bit. So okay. we're gonna nice. we're gonna get that ready. Awesome. Well, Jakir, while while you're getting that ready, I got a good question here from uh from the chat asking. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, so on the conga, as, as you mentioned, you're using the API preamp into the LA3A, and then that's going down into the Vision console emulation, the, uh, also on that channel. People are wondering, why would you choose to use the LA3A when you also have a compressor built into the Vision uh, channel strip? Um, just, well, I mean, part of, it's a part of it's a sound stylistic choice. I mean, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, the dynamic processing on the, the, the Vision strip is great. It's a pretty aggressive compressor, um, and I don't want, I mean, I'd rather kind of get a little bit of dynamic control with something that's a little bit more transparent and forgiving, like the LA-3A. And I chose the LA-3A because something like the LA-2A would be just maybe a little too dark. I mean, mm -hmm. or, well, not, it's all a choice, you know, but I, I felt like yeah. going, I, I felt like going for the LA-3A. Um, and I, cause I just want to commit, I wanted to commit to a more aggressive dynamic control to tape. Um, we can, we can just play with it real quick to throw in, um, the, well, it's interesting, uh, and hopefully the folks at home, you know, the big difference here is like the LA-3A, it's a solid state optical compressor versus you know, the the compressor that's inside of the Vision Channel Strip. That's a, uh, it's a all train, it's a solid state, uh, I believe it's not a FET based compressor, but it's a, it's a is faster. Is it not a VCA? Is it, is it VCA? I can't, uh, oh yeah, it's like, it's using the 2520 op amp as a VCA, I believe. Um, I think so. Those are I think so, two but... wildly different compression characteristics, right? Like an optical compressor sounds nothing like a VCA style compressor uh, in terms of even you know even if you were to open up the release time or change the attack times around, it's a sonic choice. And the, this is a, a the cool thing about working in Luna like this is you're not limited to one thing or the other, right? You'd, of course, now you've got the Vision Channel Strip compressor at your fingertips. But when the sound when it calls for an LA3A to get you the sound that you're looking for, it's also there and you can process through it in real time. And by committing it, by putting it up there at the top, right below the API preamp, that sound's now committed. That's it's printed into the track. You don't have to ever go back and think about it or, or adjust it again. But of course, you can continue to embellish the sound later on the road uh, as you go to mix it. Um, so you know what I would also what I would also say is one of the reasons that I used uh, a, a more transparent compressor is because mm -hmm. I know you know from experience this is like this is not really as much of a, a an engineering thought these days because we don't record to tape as much but I am using a tape emulation so something that I know that's going to happen this is kind of like an old engineering thought process is that I'm the tape is actually going to also control my transients. Right, so I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to. I want to leave myself. I want to. I want to record it, knowing that the tape playback is going to give me a little bit more glue, a little bit more control. And I also want to leave myself some latitude in the mix to make sure that I just don't have kungas that are just like bashed into you know something that is not dynamic enough to to sort of be part of the groove. I, you know, I'm not trying to get it to be. I do not want all the Kunga hits to be of equal volume because then it doesn't really have a feel anymore. So that's, mm -hmm. that's also part of the thinking process there. Um, yeah. And uh, so I've asked Dawson to set up um, while I was kind of talking to you because I don't want to make, make everybody wait too long. I mean, we want to talk, but you know, I also kind of want to be considerate of everybody that's kind of gotten ready for me out there. So I asked yeah. him to set up a record path. 
So uh, here again, we're we're going to be using the you know we're using the um, the two twelve pre for everything, right? Um, mm -hmm. Now, in this case, um, I, I did ask him to put an eleven seventy six on here, but let's just let let's just kind of let's go boldly, and because this is a clap track, let's you know let's actually, I revise I revise my my request, and um, I'm going to remove it actually. Um, ah. And we're gonna just we'll we'll just play with this we'll play with this uh, the dynamics here uh, on the channel. So hey everyone, um, just do me a favor. And um, why am I not hearing them? Uh, you, would you guys just kind of like clap at, at an approximate tempo of the uh, of the song? Hang on one second for me. Uh, I would just point out, sorry, it's, my, my brain's going a thousand directions, different directions. Um, I would just point <laughs> out that although we're not seeing a lot of level, um, uh, we, will, we will listen to this in playback a little bit uh, more thoroughly. Although you're not seeing a lot of gain reduction indication on the unit, I'm hearing mm -hmm. the compression. So that's one thing you yeah. kind of have to learn. SSLs are much the same way. That uh, even a 160, it's just like, the indicator is you're you're really getting a lot of compression when you start to see the the meter or the light kind of show up. So um, I'm I, I am totally. getting a pretty decent amount of compression, even though visually it doesn't look like it. You know you kind of have to listen for it. So um, let me get the. Wait, you mean you're up. using your ears to to make a decision? That's so crazy, Jakir. The one good ear I have, I try to use. Um, you guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start you a little bit before um, the breakdown, um, and then um, we'll go all the way through the end of the song. And, and I, we might have to run this a couple times because I'm going to be refining the sound, and we, we might, we, depending on how one pass of the sound, we might stack it up. One pass through Tommy just playing the A flat and then the second time through it. Okay, okay cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe could you just play it once so we can hear when the claps come in? Uh, of course I can. Come on and find me. Come on. Excellent. Um, give me one second. I'm going to add something here, and then we'll we'll go again. Um, so, although the 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 um, the vision strip is doing a great job of kind of gluing it together, it's not quite enough for me. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. gonna go back to my original thought, and I'm also going to use the 1176, uh, just because I. Um, I just kind of want more, more of that, more of that dynamic control. And we actually, um, we might, uh, we might even try the crazy setting. Oh, going because sometimes all that works in. really good. You know, um, uh, well, I will save this conversation for another day. Um, 
Would you guys um, give me just a little bit of a cappella clap on your own for me? Fantastic, guys. I think I do want to do one more pass, so give me one second. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to just, rec I'm going to, rec uh, can you, I'll, I'll explain some things in just a moment. Would you guys mm -hmm. um, do the acapella clapping again for me? Okay, thank you, and here we go. Um, one more time, please. Awesome, y'all. Thank you so much. You, you can come and listen with me if you want. I think what we need to do now is, uh, I don't know, Spencer, are you playing the end guitar part? Yeah, we'll get, get let's kind of get you set, moving towards that, please. So, headphone kind of stuff. Okay, so, all right, so you can see the, the unison stuff went away. Um, mm -hmm. And let me just check something, and then I'm going to explain a little bit of something to you. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, I, it just felt necessary to do the 1176 on the way in. And, and, you know, just choosing a standard sort of ratio wasn't really going to be enough. And I like the character of some multiple button stuff. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, one thing that you, you know, one thing that, you know, it's like we probably should, uh, Ben, we should talk to sort of product development about is you can you can you can shift click multiple buttons, but you can't do you can't do mm -hmm. twenty and four together. You can just do the adjacent ones. And while that's totally yeah. cool, that's totally cool. It is kind of nice to have the different combinations. So the re because they, they all behave very differently, um, and I did them I did them with different settings on purpose so that mm -hmm. as you could as you could observe like visually, they kind of because of the way the dynamics are being uh, manipulated, um, it doesn't change the time of when they're clapping, but it does change the sort of the feeling of 
how the punchiness and the attack happens. So it kind of, yeah. I did that on purpose as a little bit of a stereo interplay. I mean, it's already, you know, it's m many people clapping, so it's not per all perfectly in time. That's the beauty of, of multiple people clapping. It kind of adds this, this thick, rhythmic, you know, kind of gouge to things. Um, and then I kind of mm -hmm. panned those out. So, you know, I did, I did that on purpose. I, it's a very aggressive setting. Um, and on the first track, you did see me raise it up at the end of the bridge where I would all, all I would auto, in the future, I would make an automation move there anyway. If, if I overdo it or it's kind of a boo-boo, I can fix it because the computer is beautiful for that stuff. But, um, so <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's just a little bit of insight into that. Is there any, before we move on to the guitar, is there anything you want to talk about like that on the band? Is there any questions? No, I, uh, I think you explained it beautifully, and like that, it, that is you know, similar to what you were doing on the drums, right? With different microphones, you just showed how you can do that with overdubs of like, you know, if you're going to double something like that, obviously you're getting the human element. They're not going to be perfectly in time with the, their previous selves, but more importantly, you giving it just that little sonic difference again creates a little bit more separation, a little difference between it. Uh, and I always love hearing when you know. It, Man, Jakir, you just you have no fear of commitment to this stuff because you're right. You can always, after the fact, you could clip gain it back down if you overdid it a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. And you've saved yourself from having to like in the future remember, oh yeah, I need to do that automation move. No, no, you just committed that on the way in. Keep rolling, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I mean, I appreciate I appreciate that, and you know, I like to commit, but I but I I'm not reckless. I mean, it's from experience, yeah. and I also mm -hmm. only commit up to a point of where I know that I still have, I've left enough frequencies or dynamics or whatever it is that I'm going to need later. I've left myself a little bit work to do because I, you know, I, I don't want to just like smash it into place or like cut its knees, you know, cut it off at the knees to, you know, to fit a, a space. It's like I'll, I get it towards it and I make it feel like um what you know what the finished product will be but it's not totally finished so um yeah i mean i'm i don't think anybody should be afraid to experiment and try you can always do things over in the case of like a vocal or something that's you know where it's like you don't want to screw it up it's like yeah just be, just be careful don't you know it's like i don't eq vocals to tape you know it's just because you know i hate to go to trevor and say uh hey dude i kind of murdered your sound with you know just being you know irresponsible and brazen <laughs> and um he's he's standing here right here with me he's gonna li i'm sure he's trevor's he, you want to grab a seat with me listen to I this i gotta say that's never happened before so <laughs> you know jakir's always been very conservative as far as you know mixing it down immediately right yeah. i mean just just so we yeah you, you can make those uh ultimate decisions later yep um, but yeah, as a performer for me, no, he's, he's never like, okay, you need to do it this way. Cause this is the only chance you get to do it this way. It's kind of like up to me and how my voice is feeling that day or, you know, um, anyway, just, uh, wanted to say what's up, uh, personally to everyone mm -hmm. here on the stream. Hey Ben, how are you? He says, Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, you want to, you want to sit and, nice. sure. and Dude, you guys, you guys are, you guys are absolutely crushing it. Uh, he said we're crushing it. Oh, thank the, you. The, well, the, the, lo really the love for the song it. and the band is just oh, immense in here. Hey, fine. Um, yeah, but it, no, this has been a lot of fun. No, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say, like, you know, musically, I feel like this song has, like, a little bit of a retro feel. You know, for us, typically, we're kind of a little bit, uh, not glossy or pop, but it's like a little um, more modern pop. So I just feel like this kind of uh, recording in the studio like this with, with the gear and... Um, you know, kind of learning this new uh, up software is, has has been a lot of fun, and I feel like this song works for it because it's you want that that vintage punchy tone that you know are that that's the signature sound of like you know some of these amazing records like the Stevie Wonder records from sure. from the seventies, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we we kind of sought out that sound. Well, it's because it's totally appropriate for this. It's totally appropriate for this jam. Absol yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and this is a side. I mean, you guys are a band. It's just like, you know, it's just like you have evolved into the the sound that you have now. Mm -hmm. But you mean, but you always still in, interject the performance band. You haven't lost the band thing. No. This is this maybe leans a little bit more towards that than to the, the live feel. To the live feel than than some current things are. But it's a side of you, and I think it. If it's fun and engaged, it sounds like you guys. Well, it's welcomed, you know, because typically, yeah, we go in the studio with a checklist. We're like, we need to get these drums for this song, and it's very regimented. Mm -hmm. So this was, to the frame a bit. yeah, this has just been great to um, to 
to, to all get together in one room and, and like really experience the sound and uh, shaping the sound together, uh, you know, with Shakira and, and us. So it's been a lot of fun. Hell yeah. Oh, hell man, yeah. we really, really, really appreciate you having you guys on and, and uh, be able to share this process with everybody because that's what everybody at home is just absolutely loving getting this like, this is just no filter. This is how this process is happening uh in real time and how these tools are helping shape the sound and to hear you guys' performances and uh, and hear that how this reflects back in the music is is really really special the the, the reflect the, the process and and the reflection of it is really beautiful in the music yeah love it love it so we're so he's gonna hang out with me while we uh while we get this guitar sound going and just sort of sort of help me I'll oversee you just a little bit yeah i mean but i'm not i'm not in the control scene here at all <laughs> well he, he, hey he he's a singer in the band he's got an opinion of course he I, does. I do have an opinion i don't um, know if it's the right opinion it. or not hey there uh okay so i'm are you hearing yourself in the headphones bud I am, yes. okay so, sorry for the delay So um, remind me this this part this uh, excuse me remind me this part starts um, does it start at the top of the third chorus or yeah I think so I think I'll play two different lines and yeah it'll, it'll come in at the top of the last chorus okay are you are you playing two lines in the same performance or do we need to Correct, double yeah. oh okay okay I got you. Okay, just so just so everybody knows, it's like the you know the the guitar choice, uh, the pedal choice, the you know the the setting on the aux, which uh, you know Ben, I can probably what I'll do is I'll do some screen grabs of the auxes, and then th those mm -hmm. can go out with uh, you know with the session download, I guess, in the future, so that when when you can get in and play with this session, that you'll be able to uh kind of see what that it's like it, it's very it, like that stuff's on my laptop and it's just very it would be very difficult to show you at the moment but um yeah we'll we'll deliver that to you um and so you're, you're a bit really... of a mind reader there jakir there, there's there were folks earlier asking about what what the aux settings are so that's great to hear that we'll be able to share those with folks when we share oh, yeah, the session no problem i saved presets you know uh for it and uh, we're I, I don't really feel like i need to change anything spencer's playing a different part he's picked up a different guitar um, uh -huh. And I think, I mean, you know, I, I can't say till we record it, but I think I, I'm going to just uh, basically be recording and balancing what it is that's coming in because the sound in this case is all at the source. We're doing all the engineering work um, at the at the you know at the, in the aux really. Um, mm -hmm. So um, so yeah. So let's uh, let's get on with it. You ready, Spencer? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start you right before the break into the last course. You got me on a mission. Go ahead, go ahead. For a second, just get my headphones right. I think I'm good now. Oh, it's yeah, okay. It, can those two lines happen in the same take, or would that have to be two takes? Uh, I think they can. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I I like where you are. You playing them all in the E string? As far as that last uh, line, yeah, that's all in the E string. Okay. Okay. Cool. But I can also do that like all on one string too. It kind of sounds cool. I kind of liked what you just did that with the slide down. That's yeah. kind of cooler. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was gonna. Uh, so I, no, I got it. Uh, I re, so I so I revise because it's a clean guitar. It's a cleaner guitar. I feel like I need a little bit of compression, so I'm gonna do that. And then Spencer, I think. Well, at least the way I heard it the first time. Maybe it's different on the single string, but maybe 
Uh, the the tuning didn't the tuning sounded a little bit. The intonation maybe is a little funny up because you're way way up there. Maybe yeah. maybe mm -hmm. just check the tuning where you're fretting that highest note. Yeah, just so we're so you know we're gonna do that and um, and then I'll need you to play for me so I can set up the compressor. And just so you guys know, because I have both. What's another thing which I love about Luna is because I have both tracks selected and I have the same plug-in instantiated on, um, uh, no, it didn't do it though. It should control them equally. Maybe I did something wrong. Hold on. That, sound, that sounds better intonation-wise. Yeah, and let me know if there's too much uh, reverb on my end. Uh, okay. Hey, can you sustain that third note? Hmm. Um, not sure why it's not working. Because it, it kind of, it gets in the way of that, you got me, it gets in the way of the vocal lead-in line. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be such a stark ending. Yeah, that's that's cool. I like that. Get ready to give it a shot. Yeah. You got me on a mission. Come on. Seems like the part's working pretty good. Sounds like the part's working pretty good that way. Yeah. Is the tuning still a little weird on that? I'm into it. I didn't, I didn't, that, I didn't notice at that time, did you? I, I'm just wondering. Uh, 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 the tuning seemed okay to me. Um, I'm gonna need you to do it again because I was just still kind of getting the compressor set right, but let, let me just listen to a little bit of it so we can kind of uh, check out the tuning. Everybody listening to with me? I think we're I think we're in tune. Oh, let's just, let's just yeah, grab. it feels good tuning wise. I just probably tighten up a little performance. Double yeah. Performance in. Okay, so let's. Uh, I'm gonna get you a little closer. I'll just get you at the end of the break. Uh, here we go. Ending was really nice. Yeah, that's a good attitude. The attitude's there, and the ending was really nice. I, I don't think I did you any favors by cutting the lead in time down. Just I'm gonna I'll go back to the old starting spot. Let's, uh, I, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep that. Well, let's um, can we just go one more time? Definitely. You got me on a mission. Come on. That felt great to us. I th I say let's uh, let's double this, but let's peel back some of the reverb. Awesome. Same pickup. Uh, I don't know. Let's. What are you on? Uh, rightest. So closest to you. Farthest from me. But yeah. Well, maybe that's. I don't know. Let's. Uh, what is um? What is? Is that a five switch pickup or a? Five. A, yeah. yeah. Maybe try in between that and the middle pickup, or or just the middle pickup, with a little bit less reverb.
Which pickup is that? I'm just one closer. It's a pretty big difference. That's the new. This is the old. What does just the middle pickup sound like? I'd be interested in that one. Awesome. Because the, the, the in-between sounds a little too phasey with, with, the, with the sound we, we have. Yeah. Um, ready? Yes, sir. You got me on a mission. Come on and find me. I'm looking for a vision. Come see what I see. I'm running with the rhythm. Come be my backbeat. Be my backbeat. Oh, you got me on a mission. Come on and find me. Come on and find me. Oh, come on and find me. Think so. Uh, How'd you feel about it? Uh, pretty good. I could execute it a little bit better there at the end. You want to give me one more? Yeah, just a whole, a whole pass? Yeah. Okay, here we go. You got me on a mission. Come on and find me. Killer man, nice. Dig it. I, you know, I like how this sound kind of ties into Trevor's core sound. Definitely. Yeah. Um, awesome. Okay, I think what we had planned was uh, one oh. Moog overdub. Yeah, one more, one more thing before we wrap up the live stream. You may go grab him. Yes, please. Got um, thanks, man. Nice, nice yeah. work, Shakir. Man, that sounds that sounds really cool, and it's cool seeing it doubled and. Uh, and just most of all, being able to see this process happening in real time. Just, I love giving you guys some time and some space to like really, for people to see how this actually happens. Because as everyone at home is noticing, like, you know, do a couple takes, adjust, adjust these little adjustments, right? Like changing the pickup or, you know, just kind of refine the intonation. Little, little things, little details like that, man. They come across so, uh, so strongly once you hit record. Yeah, thanks, man. Well, I mean, to me, that's what it's all about. It's just like, yeah, it's, it's like refining your performance, refining the sound. It's like all kind of go in hand in hand because the sound, like the performance or the part should inform where you're going with the sound. And then the sound mm -hmm. in, it informs and gives the, the performance context and, and texture. So it's, they kind of go in hand in hand and typically they kind of have to develop at the same time. And um, so, you know, it's like be, the ability to move quickly and, and, and sort of stay in the moment is, is also really, really, you know, wonderful, powerful, powerful thing. Um, yeah. So is, is there, you know, while these guys are setting up, is there any, any other thoughts or questions we could kind of run down? Uh, well, the, uh, well, first of all, all of the backseat producers are wondering what happened to the cowbell track. Why, why did we do claps and no cowbell? Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Did you guys... <laughs> Maybe we, I actually, I don't think we have a cowbell hill here, so... We'll we'll try to put one in for you in the final product. We because we're gonna okay, okay. we still have some we're gonna still have a little bit of refinement uh, to do once this is over, um, and then we'll mm -hmm. come we'll come back and in the future I don't know I, th I don't know if we've talked set a firm date for a, a, re a revisit of this but we'll have another we'll have another uh, time with Ben where you know we kind of show you the finished product kind of go through the mix and kind of talk about some of the whatever is we've added additionally and. What the mix process has been like, you know, so we can kind of just dive a little bit, a little bit deeper into that part of it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a great question. I mean, so we're all here learning today, but you know, for for everyone that's you know trying to kind of up their game and on the engineering and the production side of things, do you have any recommendations or kind of you know some go-to advice in terms of really getting getting the confidence and the experience and the being able to like trust your ears? Uh, how do you kind of coach people into into doing how you, how you do it these days? Um, well, I mean, obviously, well, I think something uh, like a, a good word of advice would be just start simply. I mean, two microphones on the drums mm -hmm. is totally acceptable. You put a put a mic on the kick drum, put a mic on the overheads. Um, 
you know, have a big vision in mind, but you don't have to, don't, every piece of it and the process doesn't need to be overly complicated. Take, take small steps to, you know, bite-sized steps so you can, and, you know, be willing to experiment, be willing to make mistakes, be willing to do work over. I mean, that's the only way you're going to get experience. You know, you, we don't learn so much from our successes. I mean, our successes give us confidence and, and uh, affirm the path that we're on, but that doesn't really teach us that much. What, what teaches us is time and mistakes um, and, and like kind of looking back. So just, you know, just get in there and do the work and just have, you know, have fun and be, be brave um, and know that um, I'm nervous every session. I mean, I was nervous yesterday. You know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, am, am I going to actually get this to sound the way I want it to sound? You know, that's just, and, you know, and I've had thousands and thousands of sessions. It's just like, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. You're always going to be nervous, um, but just embrace the opportunity and, and, and kind of go for it. You know, that's that was what I would say. Yeah, man, that's that's such good advice. And I mean, you know, in a session like this one, this is you know, we've obviously added a lot of extra layers of, of difficulty to what you would what you would normally experience in doing a session by also you know cameras and you know kind of breaking down each one of these steps. But man, it is it is it. I can tell you from the chat and from myself, man, you, it's such an inspiration to see how you're able to do this stuff. And I walk away from each one of these streams hanging out with you, uh, with with you know not just not just some little tactical tips, but also more importantly, just that confidence that and as as you said, man, just like having the uh, having the will to like go for stuff, to try things out, and uh, and and kind of be brave when it comes to recording or mixing or just anything, because that's it, it translates so much into the energy of the final product, and uh, you do such a great job of it. And uh, as always, I, I really appreciate you sharing every step along the process uh, on these streams. Right, my, so it's, uh, man. my my pleasure, my pleasure. And the thing is, is like a record's not done until you say it's done. I mean, I don't. I'm not encouraging anybody to like. I think a, a, like a, a, a long, drawn-out, overthought process is not a healthy one, but, but at the same time, it is an, uh, there is always opportunity to redo, revise, rethink, um, refine, you know. So, you know, as you spend a lot of this really intense personal time in the studio working with people and you're on a dis journey of discovery and sometimes it's hard and it's not easy, but we all know at the end of the day that what we all have the same goal in mind and we're not going to put something out that we don't feel good about and even if like you know even if we walk away from here and there's something maybe we're a little disappointed about or we miss the mark it's like we still have another opportunity it's not done until we say it's done and so i mean i think yeah. that's also some words of advice it's like you're cuz you're not going to you're not going to you're not going to do something special or new or or kind of you know uh, you're not going to break any ground unless you actually try to break something you know, and just kind of put yourself in harm's way a little bit, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I don't mean stand in front of a bus, but, you know, it's just, you know, it's just <laughs> like, but, you know, it's like put a weird mic on something and just sort of see what it sounds like. Maybe it's, maybe it mm -hmm. sounds terrible, but maybe a terrible works in the context of what you're doing and that it, it inspires another part of it to sound different in a unique way. So it, there's, there's no idea is a bad idea. Um, it's just food for thought and some of it will stick and some of it will go away. So, um, yeah. we got Wes set up. Can we, uh, can we switch to the GoPro camera? I don't know if we already have or not. Uh, ha uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's hope it. We got, we got one more track to, to lay down here and I, so you guys are, let's you're setting it. this up right with the, uh, with the mini mug, I believe, correct? Yeah, we, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, nice. So, okay. We got a little bit of a starter sound here. Um, Kind of need to hear this in the track to kind of see what, how we refine it. Um, this, is this going basically? Just the, chord. just the chord. Okay. So I'm gonna tell you what, Wes. I'm gonna go to the first chorus and loop us up, and just so that I can kind of maybe play with the sound a little bit. The the tracking guitar. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, his main part. Yes. Um, I think it, it's like some of the notes were too low, so they'd be up. Like we goes to the D five, goes up. Just octave register wise. Yeah. Got it. So that it was kind of just messing like, with your just, your performance. Heavy. Yeah, because I'm doubling the uh, intervals and everything of the. The bass guitar. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay, yeah, let's turn him down a little bit. Coming in the chorus.
walk up. Ba -da -da -da. The third note, what is that? No, 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 the boom, ba -da 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 -da. F sharp. Does the bass hit that? Ba -da -da -da. Hey. Can you skip the F sharp just just to trial? I skip it there. You, you want to hit it? You want to hear with the track? Yeah. I'm, I'm cool either way. I, I could hear what you're saying, though. I could leave it out. But the bass is hitting it, and this is kind of in that low range. As long as, as long as you're off. Uh, and not, uh, yeah, which right, which right. So I'll just... Stand, so. performance I think was pretty close we could maybe quantize it but. listen listen to it come on and find me I'm looking for a vision come see what I see I'm running with the rhythm come be my backbeat be my backbeat oh you got me on a mission come on and find me come on and find Should should we so we could use that for the first and second chorus? Should should we record the third one uniquely? Sure. Is this go, going in as MIDI or audio? Yeah, it is going in as MIDI. MIDI. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we can we right. can manipulate Shift it. and quantize. Yeah. Uh, I like the sound. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, nice. Ready for third chorus? Yeah. You got me on a mission Come on and find me I'm looking for a vision Come see what I see I'm running with the rhythm Come be my backbeat Be my backbeat oh. You got me on a mission Come on and find me Come on and find me oh. Come on and find me Felt pretty good to me yeah, I added the F sharp once. <clears throat> I could redo it. Uh, the second time. The second time. We could probably just. So there are a bunch of different sounds in this. Um, the, mm -hmm. the, the funny thing is that it really is mono. There's no poly option. Oh really? Yeah, it's, it's the second time. Nice. Tiny huh? little note right there. Where? It's not right, it's not right. Ah. right there, going up. So yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, you're right, it's not there. So yet. just delete that, right? Just that one, yeah. Yep. Got it. Cool. Thank you, Dawson. No problem, Thank you, Wes. Yeah, absolutely, enjoyed it. Awesome. Uh, ben, I think that's about us for now. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, quick question on the just around the Moog specifically. Uh, yeah. Number one, uh, were you were you using the Vision Channel Strip on there uh, as well as the Moog? Um, that's a good question. I don't. Yeah, I mean, yes, but I was. It's on. It's on there because everything we create in the session is an API channel. But I didn't. I haven't done anything yet to it. No, I just. I just. Uh, you know, we recorded the MIDI, and I. I kind of mm -hmm. adjusted the sound uh, a little bit from where we started. Um, so we'll save a preset for that. Um, we'll clean up the some. We'll just tighten the MIDI up a little bit, and we'll put the fir first chorus and the second chorus. Uh, but no, I haven't yet done anything. Uh, processing wise in terms of API. That's right. But it is cool to see though that uh, and for this is actually the first time we've seen an instrument track used with the vision channel strip and for folks at home, uh, the answer is yes, you can you can actually you can run virtual instruments through the console in real time just uh, just like any other UAD plugin. As long as the instrument track is in ARM mode, it'll all work uh, in real time as expected. Uh, but the more more interesting question that someone asked here in the chat was asking about how do you deal with competing low end frequencies between like bass guitar and having a Moog? You know, this thing's got this, it was thick, it was huge. Mm -hmm. uh, people were really loving the low end from the smoke. How do you, how do you make a balance between those two uh, low end elements? Well, the balance between the, the bass and, and this Moog, you know, it probably, I mean, that's a, you know, it's going to take, it'll probably take a little bit of EQ work and, you know, in the, fi you know, the final. I mean, right now, obviously, we're listening to it really loud and proud so that Wes could, you know, feel it and perform. Um, yeah. So it'll just kind of depend on where it lives in the final in the final presentation um, and how, you know, I might have to cut, you know, in the chorus, I might have to automate to cut some of the low frequency off the bass. I might have mm -hmm. to, you know, I, I just have to figure out how to fit them together so that they, so they accentuate each other and not step on each other. I mean, the, the, the Moog has a lot of kind of buzziness to it, so it can be at a much lower volume and still be perceived and heard. Um, and so the low frequencies, even though there's a lot of it, it may not compete with the bass. It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, what I can do real quick is we can just listen to the bass and the Moog soloed up. <coughs> They're already Ooh. blending pretty successfully. You know, the thing is, is like yeah. I refined what Wes was playing on the Moog, listening to the track. I didn't do it, didn't do it just in isolation. I wasn't getting just simply a cool sound. I, you know, I, I, we sculpted the sound to fit the track. So that's that's part of the answer there. It it seems like they're mm -hmm. going to work pretty, pretty friendly together. You know, because they're they're also occupy. You know, like there's the super subbiness of the Moog, and then there's also that buzzy part of it. And Tommy's bass sound is played with the pick as it's a little bit more mid-range focused. It has weight to it, but so they kind of like they just form a relationship automatically. Yeah, oh, man, they they yeah, it's it's so cool how they fit together instantly, and that's I find that oftentimes uh, as well. Like it, it, you'd be surprised how two bass elements, especially when you have one that's focused on thickness and subbiness, and then you have a bass guitar that's a little bit more about the attack, and mm -hmm. uh, they will they work together more often than not without you know really having to, you know, to be over analytical or over surgical with it sure. because uh, each one's kind of hanging out in its own spot. Absolutely, uh, now, now nice. if, if Tommy had played like a P bass that's you know maybe a little bit thicker sounding and he played with his fingers, yeah, we'd probably mm -hmm. be in a little bit more of a of situation, but um, you know, but that's also probably why we feel like it's kind of nice to put the Moog on the chorus to begin with, because it's like we want to add in that extra, that extra weight. Because the bass sound is about kind of the, it's it's like it carries the main riff of the song. It is the attitude, you know, it's the attitude of the groove. So it is a little bit yeah. more in your face, you know, kind of poking through. Um, and then so you know, adding the Moog to the chorus kind of gives it that that real satisfying chorus weight. Totally. Well, man, Jakir, this has been an absolute blast to hang out with you today. We've I've learned so much. Everyone in the chat, we've all been just here, just eyes peeled to the screen, just really, really picking up everything that you're putting down. And it's so cool to see this process, how it comes to life, uh, and how you're able to to really make Luna a, a core 
of your sound and of your process and just the, the results are speaking for themselves already. So I'm beyond excited uh, to revisit this with you uh, once we get the final mix. We'll have the Luna session available for folks uh, upcoming here. And uh, this has just been an absolute treat to kind of learn, learn little bits and pieces along the way. And most importantly, just the overall, uh, the energy and the detail that you put into these productions. It, it really is inspiring to all of us. Uh, to see how you do what you do, and uh, it's such an honor that you share this with the world uh, here on live streams with us. Uh, I, I just honestly, man, I can't thank you enough for for doing these events with us. Uh, thanks, man. Thank you. Big shout out to you and Universal Audio. Thank you for uh, thank you for what you do. Thank you for the for the the products and the innovations you provide us. Um, very happy to be a partner. Big shout out to Moon Taxi for partnering with us yes. and being here, and you know, bringing such an awesome song. Uh, you know, sort of started with an old friend of mine that's no longer with us, and Amber, for her contribution to it. You know, Sound Emporium, and you know Dawson and Skyler being here with us. It's just like we're very thankful, and, and we appreciate it as as uh, very much as well. So thanks. Dude, we look forward to revisiting this with with you guys. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be great. And uh, thank you everybody at home for tuning in. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I have. Uh, and be sure, if you're not already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do uh, live shows almost every single week. We put on live events like this as often as we possibly can. So if you're subscribed, you'll never miss an event. Uh, and if you if you're wanting if you want to dive even deeper if you want to keep on geeking out around the API uh, as well as some of the other software that we released yesterday, uh, we're gonna have a special office hours episode th this Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, we'll be joined by Con <clears throat> by Connor and Will, and uh, we'll we're gonna find all the little hidden secrets in there. And if you guys if there's any questions that we haven't gotten to over the last couple of days, uh, that would definitely be a great time to jump in, uh, hang out with us, and uh, ask those questions. And like I mentioned, we'll we'll also cover some of the other UAD releases that were in the software update. Uh, so with that. Thank you all for tuning in. It was great hanging out with you guys. The chat, as always, you guys are amazing. Uh, so much positivity and uh, really cool to see your questions and comments along the way. And with that, guys, signing off for now. We'll see you guys back here again very soon. And thanks again so much, Shakir. Peace out, man. See you, Ben. Peace. See you guys.